Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the questing, leveling, and the travel system in Final Fantasy XIV. Now, I've decided to sort of group these three together just because they all sort of tie into each other. So, to start things off, the questing system is pretty similar to most other games such as WoW, especially more recent expansions like Shadowbringers or Shadowlands, I guess, uh, is WoW's. Um, but the main storyline is indicated with a Final Fantasy XIV type flame logo off of the exclamation point. And this is your main series of quests that bring you through all of the story all together and sort of tie everything in. And if it is your first character, I would recommend you basically just do this straight up through the whole game and you'll probably have to stop very minimally uh you may end up running into an icon of this that is red in color meaning obviously you need to progress a little bit higher in levels to unlock that one now the better way to do this would probably be to do like uh, random dungeons uh roulettes as they call them in final fantasy 14. this allows you to just queue randomly and you get a chunk of xp at the end of the dungeon usually anywhere from a third to a full level worth so it's actually quite lucrative and it also depends on which level of dungeon you get to if you get a lower level dungeon they make up for it by giving you a bigger chunk at the end since you don't actually gain xp per mobs and if it's a higher end dungeon you're going to gain quite a bit of xp per killing the mobs in general as well as a nice chunk at the end too so the next type of quest that we're going to talk about are these weird blue icons that you probably see on your screen they look important and they kind of are but they're called feature quests. Now, these are sort of unlockables for things, um, such as extra dungeons and raids that the main quest scenario doesn't take you through, that you know you can go back for mount drops and random things. They also have you know certain skills for like crafters and gatherers or your classes. You might notice these at low levels, you'll have to go back to your like Lancer's Guild or Archer's Guild, etc., to unlock new skills, and you'll have to do like these blue feature quests to unlock those. It also could unlock emotes and you know just random various items. These are things that I would probably recommend that you do on your own time if possible, but they don't really reward you a lot of XP. Now, later on in the game, they did get rid of this for at least the crafter, gatherer, and your class slash jobs. Um, they made it just sort of passive automatically. Like So once you hit level 70, there's not like another quest beyond that. As soon as you hit, you know, 72, if you unlock something, it's just automatically learned. Which I feel like was a good quality of life change for them. So if you happen to wonder like, why am I not seeing these anymore? Am I missing it? Should I be going to a new town? Don't worry about it. It's just auto learned. Now, I think we all know obviously what side quests are in most games. And Final Fantasy 14 definitely has a lot of them. Obviously this is because you get to play all of your classes slash jobs on one main character. So they needed to offer up enough quests that if that is your preferred leveling method, that there's quite a few of them out there for you to do so. Personally, I think if you do your main guy through the main quest scenario and have all of your unlockables, your alt should be dungeon leveled or through their roulette system, as well as dailies. So these are sort of a uh, circled, um spinning arrow type icon so there are quest hubs in final fantasy 14 that are different i guess there's usually three of them per expansion and one of them will be for crafting one will be for gathering and the other will be for the classes slash jobs in specific now they offer three quests each every day that you can do they give roughly a third of a level worth of experience sometimes a little bit more i think but they're kind of important because if you just feel like logging in for literally five minutes a day, they're not very time consuming. You can get a, you know, a lot of XP for minimal effort, as well as a currency, which you can use to buy gems. And they do have like gathering gems as crafting gems and normal gems for like your class. They give crit and stuff like that. So it's a free way to get those, or you could sell them for more money if you feel like doing it that way. They usually do have some unlockables like housing items or whatever, or emotes. So I would probably look for these later on as you start to reach level 60, 70, 80, etc. And uh, the lower ones like 60s usually don't give like a ton of experience, but if you are interested in some unlockables, that's definitely something I would recommend. As far as just like leveling in general in Final Fantasy 14, I know a lot of the community is going to hate me for seeing this. So sorry if you are a veteran and watching this. 
But if you came from a faster paced game like World of Warcraft, I would probably recommend a boost if you aren't like a super big lore buff. I know like me personally, I was invested in WoW lore for a little while and I mostly played the game for, you know, end game keystones, you know, end game rating, PVP, etc. And Final Fantasy XIV starting out for me was very slow. And while I had a learning curve by boosting a character, it felt more natural to me to have more abilities, more things to do, because your rotations change like so much from early levels or even some classes from just going like to 60 to 80. Like your rotations change actually like quite a bit and it's very noticeable. And I kind of just wanted to rush to the end game content. I wanted to do all of the, the high end things, see what the game was really about, see what it could offer me, if it could hold my attention at end game. That's kind of where I was personally. And if you do decide to boost, the, uh, the important thing to note here is that they have two separate boosts. One is for the story itself, and the other one will be for the class that you pick to level. Now, if you just want to level the class, you can obviously just boost that and go replay all of the story with all of your skills and just blow it through it pretty quick, which is an option for some, I suppose, if you actually care about the story, but just don't want to go through the uh, level grind of all that. And I would probably say that it's not as steep as like a cash grab like WoW, considering it's probably like a sixty dollar boost still or something for each character on WoW. For in Final Fantasy fourteen, it's probably like fifty ish on your first go through if you're doing the main quest and a character, and then after that, I think it's only like twenty five per character. So it's really not that bad. And um, I I did that just sort of try out all the classes and really just get like a jump start in the game to see if it was something I was interested in. And obviously other people do like slower pace and they just want to sort of experience the whole thing and see if that's really something that they like, whether it be the storytelling styles or, you know, how the systems work within the games or just, you know, I mean, some people figure out really early on if that's a class that they're going to enjoy. So this may be an option for you. It may not be, obviously, depending on who you are by nature. But personally, I did want to do that and just sort of jump right into end game rating content and just see what it was like and just go from there. Now, I'll probably at some point go back and do uh, New Game Plus, which is a replay of the story in its entirety without any XP, just to sort of gauge, you know, a lot of the um, content that a lot of my guildies talk about that I have no clue what the hell they're saying. <laughs> but um, the travel system within this game is also very unique as well. In regards to the zones in specific, um, Level 1 through 50 is uh, unique because in recent times they've made it sort of a uh, grandfathered feature that once you hit level 50 and do sort of the required main quests, you automatically unlock flying in all of the vanilla slash A Realm Reborn zones within the game, which is a really good feature. You don't have to go through and collect all the uh, the collectibles. So as far as these like collectibles I'm talking about, there is a thing called Aether Currents within the game. Now, in higher level zones, you're going to notice there's like these green gaseous looking orbs around and uh, you need to run over and click these because they start to uh, they collect aether currents in like a travel log. So like the first half of these that you collect through like just collecting them will unlock a mount speed increase. I'm not entirely sure how much I want to say it's like 10 percent ish roughly. Um, and then the second half that you collect once you obviously gather all of them will be flying. Now, the second half of these are unlocked through those feature quests that we talked about earlier, because obviously flying will be an unlockable for you. Um, so look for those blue icons in each zone, and if they give you an Aether Current as a reward, go ahead and do those, because as soon as you unlock all of those, you will have flying in that zone immediately. Now, unfortunately, you do tend to unlock a lot of these as you are leaving the zone, but it's really nice to already have, so it's like, you know, if you have to go back, or as soon as you're max level and you want to go back to all the content, or you have to for dailies, you're able to fly immediately, which is probably a huge quality of life change over a lot of other MMOs. And the other type of travel system within the game are the crystals. Now, personally, I definitely found this a bit confusing and it was very daunting at first. Um, I didn't really understand it and I didn't really understand the map. I think a lot of people were definitely confused by the map that I saw that came over to the game. And my best advice would be just to play with it and 
give it like a week. Just give it like a solid week and somehow you'll just passively learn it. If you don't really like looking at the map and you find that very confusing, they do have like a little icon that is for the teleport system. And this was probably a little bit easier to navigate. If you find that, you know, it says go to middle law no or something, you can just click on your crystal and scroll down this list and pick out, you know, where it is. And it's separated by expansions and zones and categories. And this was a little bit easier for me to look at. And then it just sort of carried over to the map anytime I opened the map. So I definitely would recommend probably using this system if the map is very daunting to you at first. Um, each time you run into one of these new blue aether crystals, run over and click on it because you have to attune yourself to it in order to teleport back to it in future times. This is just something to, I guess, sort of prevent people from being able to teleport like anywhere in the world. Similar to, I guess, to picking up a new flight path or whatever in other games. When we talk about these crystals in the main cities themselves, be that Limsa, Gridania, Ulda, etc., there's a giant crystal, which is sort of the main spot that you're going to teleport into. And then there are a lot of little crystals around the city itself, allowing you to just sort of move around the city faster. Go ahead and do a lap around the city, pick up all these crystals. And once you do, you will actually automatically unlock two or three extra teleports that are to the gates that don't really have like a crystal, but you'll be able to teleport right to the gates. So if you have a quest that leads out somewhere, out just outside the city you can just port right to the gates and head out and go do whatever you got so i think that's it for this video i think i've covered a lot of content and uh obviously if you guys have any more questions about this or maybe i did miss something go ahead and leave a comment down below or you guys can uh, visit our discord somewhere down there and feel free to leave a comment in there or ask me about any other features obviously within the game or give me some future video ideas on what you would like to learn or maybe you are a veteran and you were Go ahead and wondering, hey, I wish I knew this whenever I first started out too. So I'll be sure to include that in future videos. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this content and I look forward to seeing you all again.